Hi there, my name is Anne Louise. I'm with Larkin Tweed Creative, and today I'm going to show you how to create simple animations in Kajabi. Have you ever been on a Kajabi website or sales page and you've seen these really cool movements, things fading in, things moving in, popping up, even buttons popping out or elements moving down, or even in the background how things can just stay static while the rest of the page moves. Those things can really make your page look so cool and it's actually really simple to do. So I'm going to show you today how to do all of these things. So first we're going to jump in to the editor. So I already have a sales page open. And so we're going to scroll down to an element that we can animate. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to focus on this section here. So in order to animate something, you have to first select it. So just click on the element you want to animate. And then you can see it up here, perfect. So you're gonna scroll all the way down to the left side of the editor and you're gonna select animations. Now, animations can be really simple to create. You just have to understand what these four things are going to do. And once you've got that figured out, you'll be able to do it uh, with pretty much anything that's on your page. I would avoid creating an animation for every single element as it will really look like too much. So really focus in, focusing in on the gentler elements or just the more subtle elements. Um, maybe not the text as much. I don't tend to um, animate the main copy as much, but I'll definitely animate images or elements like these. So right now we have this element set selected. So let's go into type. Type is really your type of animation and you have four options. You can choose to not have any animation at all, which is none. You can choose to fade in. You can choose to flip and you can choose to zoom. I tend to use fade and zoom as I find flip doesn't really suit necessarily the mood that I try to create in my pages, so I don't use that one very often, or if any, but if you are curious about it, I would definitely uh, you know, recommend trying all of these out to see what they do to really find the one that works best for what you're trying to show in that moment. But these elements can really draw the eye and make it interesting and create a mood for your page. So I tend to use fade a lot because fade, you can really adjust the duration of the time and so forth, but um, it just has a more subtle feel and it goes with the flow. Um, now direction, you have five options. You can choose to have no direction. If there's no direction, it will fade from the middle out. If you do up, it'll go in an upwards motion, down, downwards motion, left, it'll move towards the left and right, it'll move towards the right. So right now we have none for this, so it'll just fade in and out. So if we go and just check the preview, I'll show you right now what it's doing. So see how it just faded out? Let's reset here. See that? So it just fades out very subtle, very quick. And this image actually fades towards the left. So you can see what that looks like. What if we changed it? Instead of um, no direction, let's do an upwards direction. So let's save it, check the preview. Okay, ooh, see how it moved up? Let's look at that again. That looks really cool. So those are different ways you can adjust. And now uh, animation delay, what that means is that as soon as you arrive to that section, that animation begins. So by the time you're in the section, everything is in its place. Whereas you could delay this, you could give it two seconds so that it starts slower. And you could, in this, um, so that's the animation delay, the animation duration is for how long you want that animation to last. And a hint is if the animation is really short, the animation will also be really quick. So if you want a long, slow, flowy movement, you want to increase how many seconds that you want the animation to last. So I like two to three seconds generally. I've just changed the delay to two seconds because I want to show you how that looks because we've looked at that element uh, at zero delay. So let's look at two seconds delay. So I'm going to save it and we're going to take a look at a preview. So let's go into the preview and see how it's delayed. And so now I'm here and the animation starts. That might be better. So it really depends on how you how fast you want everything to come together. and it also creates a pace for your page, which can be really great for 
um, your user experience, like how you want your people to interact with your page. If you want them to take their time and take it in slowly, the animation can subconsciously adjust the flow and the pace that the page is being digested. So I really suggest adding little animations here and there because it really creates a mood. I'm going to leave this at zero seconds and I'm going to put this back to none. Now the next thing I wanted to show you um, is the zoom, um, the zoom type of animation. So to do that, I'm just going to save this here, but I'm going to select the button. A button is a great, um, it's a great way to use the animation setting. So again, it's always at the bottom. Uh, once you select that element, and then you scroll all the way to the bottom to find animations. It'll likely be closed, so make sure you open it up. But let's say we want to add an animation to this one button. Uh, we could do zoom. I think zoom works really well for buttons. If you really want people to click this button, you want to draw attention to it. And do we want to give a direction? I think not. I think we want to leave it out in the open. We might want to delay it, give the time for your user to read the, the paragraph that's there. So maybe we delay it by, I don't know, we could delay it by three seconds. And the animation, let's make it slow, not too fast. So two seconds is usually really good. And so let's take a look at what that does to the button. Okay, so it's just refreshing. And as we scroll down, so it animated this whole section, which might be a little bit too much. So if you wanted just to animate the button, what you would need to do is actually, you'd have to separate this button from the text because right now it's all in one piece. So see how this call to action there? You could remove that and add the call to action within this section here. So you'd add content, add call to action, and then that way you could animate only the button if you wanted to do that in that section. But like I said, I don't know if I like having text um, being animated, so I would actually remove that. But I do have a section on the page where the button animates. So we're going to go none. I'm going to just set this back to zero. And we'll save it. But if we scroll down here, I have this larger button here that's kind of between two sections. At this point, your user might have watched this video. And so once they're done watching the video and this button pops out, it can have a really cool effect. And this button is actually set separately as a call to action, as you can see here. So I can animate just the button. It's on zoom, no direction, zero delay, and two seconds. So let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so we're going to scroll down, and here we go. It pops out. It makes it very attractive to click on. Now the next thing I want to show you, this is actually not considered an animation, but because it creates movement on the page, we often consider, like people would consider this an animation. Uh, so the, I don't know if you noticed, but there's an image in the background. It might be easier to see from this perspective. But there's an image in the background here that you can say, and it's staying static as everything is moving in front of it. It can create such dynamic and depth to your page. So it is something that I use quite a bit. I recommend you can use it within just one image section. Uh, for example, like right here, it's being used. And so the way to do that is actually quite simple as well, is you want to make sure you have your background selected and you, it has to be at this level. So if you're, let's say this is your the highest level of your page, it shows every section that's within this page. Uh, now in, in order to access the background, you can click on it or you go to the next level of that page. So it wouldn't be like as deep as clicking one of these elements or this text, it's the level before it. So it's the container of that section. So I'm gonna click on it. And so as you can see here, you've got the text, you've got this image, and you've got this image. So you've got all three elements here. But then the background, that's where you'll actually find this animation. And what this does is uh, just, it creates more appeal for your page. But first of all, you want to make sure that this is selected to image. You could actually place a video. Um, my only concern with that is you can definitely add a video. So if you select video, you would add a video here. Is that a video would play in the background. So you really want it to be subtle because you don't, if you have text laying over top it, an image, like it might feel like too much and too busy unless you have a video that's really, really subtle with not a lot going on. 
So an image in this case works really well. Something subtle like this, where in Canva, I really reduce the opacity so that it doesn't interfere with the text. It's still very legible. And it's just in the background to give it an effect to really uh, perpetuate the feel of this page and the feel that you want to portray for your brand. And so you would just add the image here. You make sure you have image selected up here, add the image here. And all you have to do is click this box. If this is unclicked, as you notice here, it's not moving anymore. It's just staying with this section. You click this and all of a sudden it is static in the background. And the cool thing with Kajabi is if you have that same image set to the same position on every section, it will look like this section is just one piece, but it's really section by section that you're adding this background. That's a really cool trick. And then just make sure, because if it doesn't, if you put one to bottom and then in the next section, you add this image in the background too, but you put it to center, they won't align. So you gotta make sure they're all, either all center, all bottom, all top. Uh, and it'll have that really cool effect. Now, in technical terms, in web design terms, we call that a parallax image. Just so that you know the terms, if you ever see that word or if you've ever heard that word before, parallax, that's exactly this effect here. It feels like an animation, but it's actually not an animation. But I wanted to clarify that for you in this video. I hope you found this really entertaining and helpful. And please leave any comments uh, below this video, and I'm happy to help with any questions.